So how can latches be declared and used in VHDL? And more importantly, when are latches declared by accident? So declaring and using a latch in VHDL is actually pretty simple. Uh, obviously, declaring a latch is going to involve a process because we have uh, storage. If we have memory or storage of any kind, that has to happen within a process to allow sequential operation. And so a process that uh, includes a, uh, that declares a latch has to have a sensitivity list that includes both the clock and the input D. And then within the body of the process, we have a single conditional statement which says if clock is equal to 1, then Q is equal to D, and then we end the conditional statement. We do not include an else. So what's happening here? What's happening is that we are telling the synthesizer that if the clock is equal to 1, then Q is going to copy the value of D. But what happens if the clock is not equal to 1? The synthesizer will automatically interpret this as us wanting to keep the last value of, uh, of Q. Because actually, if you uh, follow uh, the um, sense of how transactions and events happen in a process, that's what's going to happen. So when, this, uh, when the simulation starts, this process is going to be called uh, once. It's going to implement and it's going to give a value to Q. And then it will be called again whenever a change happens on clock or D. Otherwise, the value of Q is going to keep at its old value. And therefore, all synthesizers will interpret this as you wanting to declare a, an active high latch. If you want to declare an active low latch, then the conditional statement will just say if clock is equal to zero. Now, the sensitivity list for the latch has to include both clock and D, because a change on either of these signals has to reflect on Q. So if clock is equal to 1 and then it becomes 0, then we have to reevaluate the process because then that means that the uh, output of the, the outcome of the conditional statement changes. If the clock suddenly goes back up to 1, we have to go and reevaluate the process again because the conditional statement is now true. But also, if clock is equal to 1, we have to go and reevaluate the process whenever D makes a change, because we always want changes on D to reflect on Q. And therefore, the, uh, the uh, sensitivity list has to include D. This is a complete sensitivity list, because it includes everything on the right-hand side of the assignment and also all the signals used in conditional statements. Usually, when we use a complete sensitivity list, the process is implementing a combinational uh, circuit, but in this case, it's actually uh, implementing a latch. So latches in VHDL are not interesting just because uh, we want to use them. Maybe you want to use them sometimes to create a latch loop, but because they often get declared by accident, and this is what we call implicit latching. So you, you end up creating latches, uh, latches by uh, just implicitly telling the synthesizer to do so when you didn't actually mean to. And this always happens when you use conditional statements, ifs or cases, and you forget to state some uh, of the conditions. So ifs and uh, cases can be used to do two things. They can be used to do uh, priority encoding, which is a combinational uh, operation, pure and simple, or it can be used to do uh, uh, registering and latching, which are sequential operations. You have to use it in either or of these two users. You cannot mix and match. You should not mix and match. You can, but you shouldn't. So if you look at this uh, if else statement, for example, we are actually implementing a three by one multiplexer. If the select bus is equal to 0, zero then segment, sig signal out is going to be equal to A. Uh, if it's uh, equal to 0, 1, that is going to be equal to B. If it's equal to uh, 1, 0, then it's going to be equal to C. And this is our intention. We intended to do this, to implement this. But what the synthesizer sees is a deficiency because it doesn't see what to do with the other values of, of select. So what happens if select is going to be equal to 1, 1? Well, in this case, uh, you don't care. But you should have told the synthesizer, the synthesizer that you, should, you do not care because now the synthesizer thinks that you want the value of sig out to keep its old value 
when select line is equal to 1, 1. And so it's going to actually latch the value of uh, sig out. And it's going to use the select line so that when the select line is equal to 1, 1, this is the active high of this latch. And it's going to create a latch, an, in, an, in, an implicit latch that you didn't intend to create, but you actually told it to create. So let's assume that we uh, solve this problem by telling it that else if select is equal to 1, 1, sig out is equal to D. And then we make it a 4 by 1 multiplexer. We just have, we are, we are happy to accept this, right? Okay, it's a 4 by 1 multiplexer now. Now, what's the problem? The problem is that it still is going to create a, an implicit latch. Why? Because select is, in all likelihood, a standard logic vector. And therefore, it could take more than just the four values that we see here. It, it could be more than 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. It could be xx, xu, 1h, 1l. So remember that standard logic type can take more than just values of 0 and 1. And so the synthesizer looks at this and says, aha, so you want it to be these values for these values of select, but for the other values that you haven't stated, you still want it to be latched. And it's going to create an implicit latch. And that implicit latch is not only useless, it's dangerous. It's going to change the behavior of the circuit. It's going to impede timing analysis, and it's probably going to make the, the circuit fail. So what do we do about implicit latches? Um, implicit latches, the problem with them is that they don't cause an error. They do not appear in an error list because this is actually a legitimate thing to do. And if you are experienced, you can probably use it to do something useful. But they do appear in a list of warnings. So you have a list of warnings as well as a list of errors. And there are two types of warnings that you should always look at and at least consider, if not fix. Uh, warnings involving implicit latches and warnings involving deficient sensitivity lists. You should look at both of these and try to solve them as much as possible. So how do you solve them? You solve them by whenever you use um, an if else statement, make the last statement else, an all encompassing else. It shouldn't be an else if, even if it describes a specific case. And so this should have been else, just else, right? And this includes the one one and every other value of select. And the multiplexer will understand that you want to implement a four by one multiplexer. And for the case statement, the last statement should be when others and all encompassing others, which includes your last choice as well as all the, uh, you know, funny values of standard logic uh, that you haven't included yet. The problem with implicit latching is that it's sometimes a little bit hard to discover, like it's a little bit hard to spot because um, there's an implicit latch being created here. Even though we have a final else, we do have a final else, there's still an implicit latch created. Why? Because if you see for, for the, for the um, condition select is equal to 0, 0, we assign sig1, sig2, sig3, and sig4. Whereas for the case 0, 1, we only assign sig1, sig2, and sig4. And so, so sig3 is assigned only in three out of the four cases. And in one of the cases, it's not assigned. So what does the synthesizer assume that you want to do here? It assumes that you want to keep the old value of sig3 when the select line is equal to 0, 1. And it's going to create an implicit latch for sig3. So this kind of implicit latching is very common, actually. Uh, and um, here we see it again with a case statement. In this case statement, there will be an implicit latch created for sig2 because it's not defined for the when 0, 0 case. Now, this is more often done intentionally by uh, experienced designers when they know that the value of the signal isn't actually going to change between these two cases. But I don't recommend that you do this. It's a, it's a little bit dangerous. It doesn't make the code uh, any more easy to read. And uh, it actually does create latches that you probably don't want there. So you should always state the values of all the signals for all the cases to make sure that the output of this, the outcome of this uh, process is a combinational outcome that you fully understand. Even if 
Stating the values of the signals seems tedious and repetitive. You should always do it. It's just, you know, it, it, it causes no harm and it saves you the trouble of, of having implicit latches in your warnings list.